everybody. Crypto Putter here. What's going on? What's going on? Well, it looks like, as you can see here, we are going to be doing an AMA with Caesar Calls in about two minutes and a little, little less than three minutes. So just wanted to come in and give you guys a heads up um, on what we're doing. And let's just take a, take a look at uh, Falcon X and see how it's progressing. I think this is what we're wanting to see right up and to the right very nice very nice of course um this is the swap page um on the deck and uh the liquidity the pools farms staking those are still um about to be launched um not exactly sure of a time frame yet maybe uh when matt comes on uh falcon x comes on he'll um give us a heads up and let us know all the good alpha that we're going to be getting here. So I'm going to um, pause this right now until the uh, AMA starts, and then we're going to record it and um, let everybody uh, take a look at it at their leisure. If this information is, is uh, helpful for you, uh, hit that share button. Let's get it out to a bunch of other people and let the community grow. Um, I'll be recording this for Mac. I'm, I'm part of the Falcon X team, so I'll be recording these and putting them out. So hit that notification bell. That way, anytime that uh, I do put one out about Falcon X, um, you'll get that notification. And if you wouldn't mind, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to grow the channel as best as I can. Um, just talking about Falcon X mainly. I do play golf, um, just some other journeys. But um, anyway... I will see you guys in um, in about a minute. So, Matt, that give you a quick rundown of the format just while we're we're waiting. I typically kind of start these around five or six after. Uh, so, once the recording goes live, I give about a sixty to ninety second. You know, thank you for coming out. A little bit about the project, what we saw. I know Will was was in touch with you guys on this one, so I'm like kind of what he saw to to bring you in. Um, we'll touch on the utility, very high level, and kind of what I've seen in the roadmap is like to come, and then I'll throw you the mic. I always ask the teams to start with more of a personal introduction, your your time uh, within you know business, but also within DeFi that gave you the experience to want to create something like Falcon X, and then it's very conversational style, very informal, no preset questions, just get up here, tell us about the project, we'll cover everything from usage the token how the token and the utility this is a big one i always say if the teams are able to kind of tie that value of the token and the utility together in their answers it really helps to hit the point home for our audience and for the listeners and even i'm sure for some of their community members uh, that bought in without really knowing what the future is sometimes is you know the way that uh, things work with hype and whatnot in this space so again really excited to have you here uh, if you have it, I know with the time zone, it's about midnight there for you. Budget about 60 to 75 minutes. I do find utility projects sometimes, you know, spill a little bit over that 60 minute time, time set. So if that sounds good, Matt, just wanted to run through a quick breakdown. Um, screen shares are fully available. I know a lot of the times team prefer audio, but if you want to screen share, you do have full capabilities to get that set up. I can give you a minute or so to do so. Uh, but yeah, just a quick breakdown on the format, the agenda, and how things typically run in terms of uh, flow. Yeah, I can set up the screen share. I'll do that right now. It won't take too long. Let's make sure I share the audio. And there we go. So you should better see what I'm seeing. Perfect. Yes, we got it up here live. Looks good. I think size in here so he's going to be recording everything as well on his end I'm hoping I will be doing my mine he just gets better quality for the YouTube upload uh, so yeah we look good audio is coming through fine no reverb I will go ahead here quickly and get started on my title give me about 15 seconds Matt and I will uh, be good to rock it from there just have to get sounds the, awesome too easy Maurice. awesome I'll get it drafted and spell checked, and then we're good to go. Thanks.
Perfect. So. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to come out. First and foremost, hope everyone enjoyed their weekend. We have our week starting out here with the team from Falcon X. Fal X is the ticker symbol. They launched on Solana May 17th after they successfully raised, I believe it was 2,167 Solana. I don't have the pink sale up, but I saw it late last night. Uh, so again, pretty impressive, uh, larger starting market cap than, than a lot of the projects we've seen, especially coming out of pink sale lately. So they were doing something right in their marketing and their lead up. Uh, and we'll kind of spend the bulk of the AMA breaking down what they were, you know, what they're building, how that relates back to the token holders. Uh, and for me, what Falcon X is, it's a, a new DEX that's kind of building up on the Solana blockchain. Focus on speed. You know, you'll see it a lot of the times if you're on their website, their white paper, if you're checking out their, their Twitter, a lightning fast, the lightning, uh, the fastest lightning decks on um, Solana, quick UI. I haven't personally put through a trade there on it, um, but I'm hoping throughout the, the AMA or maybe after some of our community members will be able to, to jump in there, utilize the, the tech and give us some feedback because that's the way that... Uh, you know, you want to see it done. So I know they're still super early, as I mentioned, only 10 days old, but they have been building for a while. So they have some some additional rollouts and improvements coming to the, their decks. I know they're going to be working on kind of updating their white paper as well, from what I've been uh, led to understand. So excited to have you here, Matt. I know this is still very new. You guys have been, you know, seeing some good success in the early stages. You didn't see that pre-sale dump that happens a lot of the times, especially after a raise that big. Uh, so again, you, you've been doing something right. We're here to kind of highlight, you know, what that is and learn a little bit more about the utility and the token uh, all together here today. So excited to have you. I will go ahead and throw you the mic. And one last time, this is Matt representing here from the team at Falcon X. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's great to be here and talk about Falcon X. You know, it's our baby. It's our Dex. And yeah, you can get into you know, all the nuts and bolts of, you know, what it is as a project. And of course, you know, with the community right behind us. So, yeah. So, uh, did you, you want to... Uh, just with, uh, more of a personal intro, that would be terrific. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Um, so, yeah, a bit about myself, a bit of background. I've, you know, been in the DeFi space since, you know, 2019. I uh, actually got into... A little bit of crypto mining, a bit of Ethereum mining. Had my whole rumpus, which is where the pool table is, just filled with, um, you know, uh, graphics cards or GPUs, as you call them. And it got a little bit heated in here, you know, say the least. Uh, the wife, you know, liked it in the winter, but not in the summer. So sort of had the, you know, Ethereum, you know, 2.0 was coming out. So sold, sold up shop, so to speak got into DeFi. What else would you do as a DJ and you get into DeFi? Absolutely. That's what I did. Um, yeah. Some projects were running, some not so much. And just, you know, exposure with, with those projects. I uh, started a little bit of YouTube myself. Um, I don't have as many follow followers as you do, Maurice, but got into that and then, you know, got together with, you know, like-minded people and, you know, who else better to make a project than yourself? You know, you know, something that you can trust, you know, and, and build pretty much from the ground up. And that is, you know, the whole meaning behind Falcon X Falks. So it's built from the ground up and community involved all the way through. So that, you know, that's the background for myself. If you want something done right, do it yourself. So I yeah, love that approach exactly. uh, you decided to take. 100%. So yeah, exactly what we've done. Uh, you spoke about the pre-sale. It was an amazing pre-sale. Um, you do, uh, you know, you expect a bit of drawback, but there was nothing. So being utility as well does really help. So because we do have that utility, people can see the roadmap, you know, what we're building, what's in the future, keeping the community informed, uh, updates, updates, updates. And then on the other side, marketing, 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 so important. Uh, of course, you know this and a lot of people listening, of course, you know, marketing is important. Um, sometimes people think you can do more marketing, but we we did that. We exactly did that. So 
things that the community didn't see we were marketing in the background so might you know at times you might think hey there's... i have a, a question for you matt because this is a, sure. a conversation and a topic sorry to cut you off but this is something i've been talking to a few people about who are pretty active you know work full-time in the space about how maybe the last 45 60 days the shift from memes or from utility which you know kind of when the the big you know pump happens what was it around october november last year when when we started seeing that positive sentiment come back into the market that carried us into 2024 it was utility projects that were by far kind of leading the way we we're seeing a lot of these new ai and whatever that you know the meta was of the month or or the time kind of pop up and run 100 yeah. couple hundred million but we've seen last 45 60 days or so the shift has been straight memes so my question is like how as a, a utility play on a, on a network that's necessarily known not for its utility projects, were you able to, to do such a good job in the raise? Because if you look at the, the socials or the Twitter, you guys only have about 65 posts out. So it's not like you were, you know, spamming the marketing from the, like the more reach driven platform, which, which is X, right? So, I mean, yeah. very impressive stuff, but it, it's just, it's one that I, I saw and I was like, damn, I got to ask him that. It's an outside the box question. Yeah. I think I've ever that, asked something like this, that, but it's very fitting for yeah. the time. That That is a really good question. And really to answer it quite simply is just being fully transparent, um, letting the community know what we have, what we're going to do and actually doing it. So that's the main you know reason for the success I'd like to think. And of course the team as well. So just the team, the marketing behind it, uh, having those connections. Uh, it's it's important to have those connections because you don't know, you know, if you're going to do some marketing, is it going to be effective? So just knowing that you're going to do marketing and it's actually going to have results is a plus. You're not throwing away any, you know, crypto in the process of trying to get that, you know, marketing that gets somewhere. So, yeah, you know, just, you know, having that, we actually have like, you know, fully supportive community just getting right behind us the whole way. So and just involving the community as well, Maurice. It's 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 been it's been crazy. It's been crazy. Um yeah. It's I mean a lot of 900, uh, 950 initial contributors. Um and your holder count's grown pretty nicely since your launch 10 days ago. So like the the adoption or the the buy-in seems to to keep happening. And I did allude to it a bit in my intro is a lot of the times with these larger raises, you do see uh, a pretty drastic sell-off within the first 24 hours, but you guys didn't really experience that phenomenon. Um, so yeah, like definitely something was being done right. You guys, uh, the people who bought in are, are holding and giving you guys some time to, you know, at least at this stage, uh, find your footing, which is, is good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're talking about meme meme tokens, it's a totally different beast with the utility token. And I don't know, I think the shift is kind of shifting back to utility, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's just Falcon X. But yeah, just the support is amazing. And I mean, definitely I'm sure we'll get into it. Our goals, you know, for the future moving forward, you know, very ambitious, but we're, you know, working on getting to phase two of many phases to come. So it's, it's exciting. Um, yeah, I'm excited about it. So I'm sure the community is you know, excited about it as well. Yeah, no. And I mean, definitely the chart. I mean, the way that things are progressing in the early stages, definitely ex excitement to be had. So uh, makes sense that they are kind of functioning and, and pushing the way that they have been. Now, the, the other question I wanted to throw to you before we really kind of deep dive the nitty gritty, the the utility and everything you're building there at Falcon X is, um, you know, it may come off as a bit of a more standard question, which I typically don't like to do, but there's a bit of a reasoning behind it. Um, so why Solana? And the reason I ask that is because, you know, a lot of the times people don't really understand the utility plays on that blockchain i feel like the education has been a little bit lacking it's been very very meme focused so what's like the reasoning behind that chain is it because what you're seeing in terms of volume and usage is uh, a lot of transactions 
Uh, just kind of trying to pick into your yeah. brain on why that change well, versus maybe bass or some of these other hyped ones. We're seeing. I'm not a fan of bass personally. Just to, <laughs> neither am I. <laughs> there's good projects on bass, but as a yeah. top down, there's too much centralization and and links to stuff that I wouldn't want to have on there. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand totally, but um, yeah, wouldn't uh, you know? Um, wouldn't choose bass either, but it's pros and cons. Uh, the main reason, of course, is yeah, exactly the volume. So, of course, the volume. You know, making I think it was like the top four chain in, in volume. Um, so the meme tokens just taking over. So you you go onto Pink Sale and all you see is all these meme tokens, and it was quite interesting seeing us trend. You know, number number one like for a long time um, on uh, Pink Sale uh, against all the other memes. So that's utility, right? That's the power of utility. But yeah, the, the main reason we have chosen Solana is it's it's super fast. It's, you know, really, really fast. I think it handles like 2,000 plus transactions per second or whatever it is. And the fees, super cheap. So that's 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 why the memes are on Solana. It's so cheap. So most of the tokens have zero tax because Falcon X has zero tax as well. No tax. So the tokens don't have any tax. Uh, where if, you know, compare to, you know, B BSC, Binance, you, you probably have a little bit of tax on tokens. So yeah, predominantly, but yeah, no tax. Uh, and the main reason, of course, is if you're, I know you don't want to have it like, this is a business mindset. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a utility token. It's a project. It's a DEX. But if you wind back and you do have to put your business cap on, definitely when doing a project like this, um, there's market share out there. So radium, Jupiter. So that's one of the main reasons. You find a gap in the market, you jump in there and you grab it. So that's that's where we're at. And I, and I always kind of ask, I mean, you, you don't have to have the, the answer necessarily right now because a lot of the times, you know, especially in the early stage of teams are, are working towards, you know, figuring out how to get to, to what they're trying, you know, what their solution is or, or how to add the value they're looking to bring into their space via their utility. Um, but, but that's really where I wanted to spend my next question before we go the, the more traditional AMA route and break down the utility and the token and whatnot is the, the value or the problem solved. And, you know, this is the million dollar question. If, you know, I always said if it was that easy to answer, everybody would know how and, you know, projects would all be hitting 100 million like you never have dips. Right. So it's the the problem you're looking to solve. So, you know, it was a great answer. I love your response. The reasoning for why soul makes so much sense. But now when you're looking at Falcon X and you, you touched on some of the competitors, where do you feel the gap existed for you guys to come in and take some of that market share. And what would you say is like the, the problem that you guys can solve here at Falcon X compared to some of the other DEXs or solutions that exist? Again, you don't have to answer, have the answer right away. And if you don't, that's okay. Um, it's kind of that million dollar question. And as you work to your way towards finding it out, that's when you really see these projects have staying power. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I'm going to answer it. Uh, so what problems are we going to solve? So I don't know if you've used Radium. It's slow. I I I don't like to you know put stuff on you know other projects, but um, it's it's yeah. terrible. I mean, it had that condition. Yeah. <laughs> what was it around? But, like um, but that, yeah, that was I, kind I, of I, when I, the, the shift yeah. happened. I mean, on Soul kind of to base, right? Is when the congestion shit happened. So yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Will... So you don't have to, Matt. <laughs> no, well, I'm. I'm a nice, I like to say, I like to think that I'm a nice person, like in that regard. So I'm not going to put shit on, you know, radium. Or, you know, but in saying that, um, where we come in is, you know, optimization. So optimize our um, DEX itself, optimize it for speed, optimize it for, you know, you know, that, you know, use when you use a case, you know, it's, it's smooth, just being on top of that listening to the community that's where we're you know we're you know miles ahead just listening to the community and providing that you know in you know the upgrades the changes the uh, implementing of all this um, from the community you ask for it you'll get it of course if it's you know fitting to you know our direction as a dex so outrageous things of course we're not going to jump into it we're going to stick to the roadmap but yeah definitely speed optimization 
and gamification that we are bringing out as well. So it's going to be, you know, a, a wholesome Dex with all of that utility packed all into it. And yeah, a lot of crazy things, a lot of, a lot of really good things coming in the future, of course, getting our own um, Falcon X router, which is very important. So once we have that, we can have 50% of all the fees collected will go to buying and burning of the token. So just, you know, uh, get a bit of that scarcity going with the token itself um, and value for the Falcon X token. Because at the end of the day, if you do get into this project, you're going to be a holder of the token. So if it rises in price, everybody's happy. So yeah, having that, having, of course, the cross-chain bridge, so just implementing all that. Um, and then who knows, the future, we could be listing uh, tokens uh, on, you know, uh, fair launches, uh, launch pads. There's so much direction that we could take and it will come down to the community, uh, their involvement and where they want you know to head as a DEX. So the path for us. So yeah, I mean, Radium, Jupiter, you look at how much market share they actually, how much market share is out there between them. It's a lot. So looking at us right now, we've just started. We have just started the journey and yeah, it's, it's going to be, you know, a massive, massive journey. But yeah, that, that's what sets us apart. So actually yeah. caring about our decks and caring about the community. And you had mentioned, um, you know, in your, in your response to supply. Now I just want to kind of go through that and, and the breakdowns on, on, you know, the distribution for everybody. Uh, so 10 billion, you know, I believe is your supply if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then, yeah, just have us, you know, give us a little bit of a breakdown for that. And then for me, the the big piece that I want to focus on is going to be on the staking and how you guys are sustaining that over time. Because, you know, a lot of the times projects have that preset amount, but they find it difficult to replenish like they're, their war chest for lack of a better terms when it comes to their staking rewards. Um, and once it gets kind of close to the end of the 14%, the, the value of, of like the passive income dwindles and then, you know, the long-term holders often sell off. So it's, it's really important that over time you guys are able to either sustain that via, you know, revenue streams on your utility fees and stuff. So yeah, just wanted to make sure I, I mentioned that as well when you're going through your answer. Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to uh, give you a rundown of the tokenomics, so you, yeah, exactly right. There's 10 billion tokens uh, in, in circulation. So you do have all stuff from the top. You have your staking. So, of course, I'll just run over staking, marketing, and airdrops. They're all in multi-signature wallets. So you need three people to uh, authorize and uh, confirm and execute those. So obviously, you have uh, staking, we need more staking rewards in the staking pool. And then three of us, so I'll initiate it and two more people uh, from the team will have to initiate that as well. So that's the extra security that we have because we can't have them locked in a contract. We need to actually use them. So yeah, it's very unique. The tokenomics, as you can see uh, on the screen share, it's very unique. So staking's 14%. Uh, I can come back to that on um, how that will work. Uh, marketing. 12%, that's to market this DEX. So that's to get eyes on the project because the more eyes, the more adopts user adoption. Come over and try our DEX out. It's it's the fastest DEX on the Solana blockchain. Uh, airdrops, that is for um, a previous project. So that, that really goes back to a previous project that we had, um, Solex. So that's airdrops at 7%. So 7% uh, in 30 days from launch, that'll commence and that'll be uh, uh, three. So that's 7%. So that'll be 3% every week over 33 weeks. Of course, you had the pre-sale. So that's 30% going out to people for the pre-sale. Liquidity. So we actually had 100% of the liquidity uh, put onto, I'd hate to say the name, but Radium. That's our only option, right, from PingSale. Um, and that was burnt. So the LP was burnt. So that's awesome. So that means that no one has control of that LP. It's still there and it just keeps growing. Uh, if you do look on, uh, you know, Dex Tools, Dex Screener, 
it's a thick, thick looking liquidity. So that's the liquidity. And then of course the team is 8.5%. So rewinding back to staking. So that's 14%. I'm pretty sure that's probably over a million dollars by now uh, going off, you know, the percentage there and what the value is now. That is going into staking. So you have Falks, Falks token. Uh, we'll have Chuga. So we actually partnered with a, a meme um, token. It's called Chuga Wads. So the partnership there is they'll be staking on our uh, DEX and our own Falks tokens. And then we'll have two stables being USDT and USDC. So the rewards there, 80% for Falks, 50% for Chuga, and 30% for both of the stables. So that is, you know, fees, of course, collected for, you know, um, stake, staking. To, uh, and then, had to jump in, Matt, because um, yeah. I, you mentioned Soul X, and I, I do remember that project, unfortunately, because our, our private community was... Um, kind of in investigating when it when yeah. it went down so I, I do need to, before we continue on with the ama just to get a little better background on sure exactly yeah that it, really involved it in deserves it. a little bit more i just didn't know yeah. if you wanted to dive into it uh yeah of course so yeah we have a very deep connection with our previous project and that's the support that we have from the previous project so we had um in a nutshell we had a dev who was amazing at his job, but he had other plans. And long story short, he did uh, drain uh, the the staking liquidity. Uh, and then, yeah, so that was a bad actor in the space. And then from there, um, everyone was in just distraught as you are if a project goes down and, you know, it's from something like that that's happened. Um, yeah, I, I was down myself, of course, because I lost a lot of money. I didn't want to, you know, do anything to do with crypto anymore. I was, I was down and out and I had people reach out to me and I know it, it go, it's, it's deep, but they reached out to me and said, there's a lot of support out there uh, for you. There's a lot of support. We actually can make something of this. And, you know, it then evolved to rising from the ashes like a Phoenix. That's what we were, you know, that was us. And then of course, uh, with anything, um, it is about your your brand, branding, and your name. So doing research on the name, uh, then we you know got stronger as a community, uh, turning into a story. But yeah, stronger as a community, turning into a falcon. So that's the background. So that's where we you know we will never hide the fact that this has happened to us, and it's important to let people that come in uh, to our community come into our Telegram. Tell them where we've been, tell them what we've been through and how we are you know, moving forward stronger than what we actually were to start with. And that's where the airdrops are the 7%. And that's the reason for the 30 days as well, Maurice. Give a bit of time for breathing space for the decks so it can get up and running. And of course, yeah, just you know, look after the previous people that were in that project. And that's hopefully the new investors will look at that and go, you know what? They're looking after their previous investors. That's awesome. And it's only 7% of the tokenomics. So that, that's the background uh, from, yeah, Solex. So I appreciate that. And uh, I think, you know, some of the feedback from our community was that they were using your, your Solex bot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they mentioned it was still very much in its infancy stages, but they did seem to have, you know, positive feedback about the UI and the speed and everything. So like, you know, the bot itself, the utility. Yeah, we, we didn't have a bot. The... Sorry. You might be confusing up to, yeah, we just had a DEX. So it was a Soul X DEX, Solana X. Yeah, there was no, no bot. On, oh, yeah. they, they, I mean, it could just be like the way they, they phrase the utility being a bot yeah, versus okay. DEX. <laughs> just, um, just make it that clear. We didn't have a bot. That's fine. Yeah, yeah no, it is just, it's the same project. I'm just reading the conversation in the, the private group here about it because yeah we have some very well connected people they're pretty on top of a lot of the things that happen in the space and i knew i recognized the soul x name from prior so when it came up it, i immediately pulled up at the private group and i was like i've seen this somewhere and just you know did a quick search and found out the backstory so i appreciate you, you jumping into that i mean it's tough to to 
see that you guys had a you know a bad actor within the the ranks but you know it's better to get them out now than you know if the project were to hit 50 million uh what yeah when i guess when did the exploit officially happen like what were your your market cap and like your liquidity and stuff at the time um just yeah i growing, mean growing, i think it was growing it was today. heading it was heading towards five million but then it dropped down so i think uh from memory I think it was like 300k it was all that the bad actor would um you know when i say that's all that that's a lot of money right but yeah it was Definitely. about 300k yeah, but, it was uh, yeah it's better 300 yeah. than a million like this you know yeah better. i mean but then we always say that when something bad happens you're like it could have been worse yeah you've like, seen way yeah. worse in this space so oh yeah but turning that into uh you know that is a definite negative turning that into a positive so us as a dex learning from that implementing all the security measures implementing everything so just just evolving and just making sure that we make the right steps and set this up for success uh get the audit done by solid proof that you take those extra precautions have all the multi-signature wallets so that's what it's all about and people can see that of course and yeah we definitely you know have that that support and it does drive that support does drive from the previous project from previous previous people that were in it and they you know this is what they're building together as a community we'll you're coming together yeah and now i don't know if i don't expect you to have like this number off the top of your head because it's a bit of a weird one to to have but um looking at the because you, you mentioned seven percent for the airdrops from from the prior project now looking at those individuals or those past holders did you guys do or look at like a breakdown of how many of the people who were getting airdrops potentially went back in and recontributed to the uh, fair launch on pink sale just to maybe increase their position, whatnot? I'm just trying to figure out how many of the you know initial yeah. contributors. So this came this into, will uh, actually need this will actually need APIs and uh, that to get the data, but the devs that we have can get that data. But that's why that's kind of the reason why. As well, it's kind of more to, of a new question. I'm I'm a little bit uh, you know yeah weird when it comes so, to them, some of that specifics and I love math and like you know understanding yeah, like percentages or holder breakdown yes. and stuff is really big for me. So we, the last thing I wanted to um, you know we, we could always chat later about that. I I, I don't need you uh, if if the information isn't available right now. No, no. All I'm saying is that we will get that data. Yeah, definitely. That's when we're, we're going to use the um, thirty days. The main priority was of course to get the decks out. Uh, the next one will be the staking and then moving straight into the airdrops. So we'll get that data and then let the community know how that's going to, you know, progress moving forward. Well, the the airdrops for the um, prior holders will be complete. Yeah, exactly. And and then, of course, airdrops. And now for top when they well. get the airdrops, uh, is there going to, like, because your staking protocol is going to be live at that point, basically yeah. on what you mentioned, are you going to require people to stake or like, will you guys auto stake those, those airdrops for maybe 30 days and then they could be claimable. So you don't have that like massive flux of people trying to claim and potentially, you know, sell off getting linked to that. Cause yeah, well, look, it is 7%, you know, even yeah, if 3% of the 7% sold like that could cause yeah. uh, a big enough dip to cause panic. And then we know how this space works to cause more of a dip and then, you know, then you're kind of yeah. If you're that. if you're Maurice, if you're talking about like a vesting period, um, yeah. yeah I mean, it is in a way, but it's yeah. tough because it's airdrops. So it's three percent to, to a sense. Yes, place it's actually three percent of the seven percent, if that makes sense. So it's it's not three percent of the total uh, circulating supply. It's yeah, three percent of the seven percent over thirty three weeks. So that's why we have made it that way. So it's not all at the same time it's spread out so it's going to have you know less price impact so to speak and of course if those people would like to sell they'd like to stake i'm not going to tell them what they need from there what they have to do that that's up to them so if we will incentivize of course to stake because you get a, a, you know you get extra falcon x tokens but if people want to sell at the end of the day that's totally fine uh, we're not forcing anything upon anyone but yeah that's that's Three percent of the seven percent over thirty-three weeks, so it's spread out. Yes, we apologize that it takes a long time, you know, to get 
roughly uh, as the calculations that we have gone, it was about 25% of what you originally would have had. It's better than nothing. But in saying that, we are we are doing that to you know support the previous you know project people that were holding. I I, I like that. Um, and yeah, the only other thing I wanted to cover in the the distribution tokenomics discussion right now, uh, before we get back into like really the brand and the growth of the utility and like the the project, is going to be the distributions in some of those wallets. Um, that are in play. I mean, the the largest, the fourteen percent, uh, being held. I'm I'm gonna assume that's a staking, uh, contract. Yeah, that's the staking. Yes, yeah, I just I like to have everything kind of officially broken down and and answered, uh, during these AMAs. So, any other large wallets in play uh, out of I think there's, was it twelve or thirteen wallets that hold above four percent, oh three percent. There was like a good chunk in that top 10. So I was just hoping if you could touch yeah. any wallets so in the, that potentially aren't linked to the project. That's all. So, yeah, of course, we have team tokens. Uh, we have some people on the team. Um, 4%, that's that's my wallet. So I haven't sold anything of that. So you can you can track that all you want. Uh, anything below that, I do have you know, a um, couple of people on the team that have wallets as well. But of course, as you have any project, you make sure your team is you know protecting the chart because you know they're in the ecosystem itself. But apart from that, yeah, you've got the top ones. So you got uh, staking. You got uh, that's fourteen percent, twelve percent. That's for the uh, marketing side of the house, and then of course seven percent, which is the airdrops. Uh, and yeah, the original team token breakdown is eight point five percent. So as I said, I have 4%, haven't touched that. Um, of course, I'll take some profits down the track, but very sensible, you know, with protecting a chart uh, because if someone does sell a large amount, it's going to drop the chart. No one wants that. And I definitely don't want that. So being sensible about it. But all of those top ones are in multi-signature wallets because we do need to use them and that's the safest place we can have them. So they're in a multi-signature wallet. You have to go through a lot and it's actually sometimes hard for some people in turn to go, I press the button, it's not working. So yeah, it's very secure. So that's the the top wallets, Maurice. Awesome. Now let's uh, go into the, you know, the, the actual decks, the functionality, how somebody, you know, that's a holder is going to maybe benefit versus somebody who's utilizing the decks as a, as a non-holder, just, you know, using the decks right as an everyday user uh, any benefits somebody's going to see if they're holding foul x in their wallet and, and connecting to the decks versus not um you know different features that you guys are going to be adding in what what it's like right now what type of bandwidth you guys are set up to support this is the fun stuff right this is all about yeah. utility, what you're doing yeah. what's to come features and how you guys feel you can scale it so Again, now that we're kind of through the, the more basic and, you know, I guess scene setting, we're going to jump right into to what you guys are actually building, the crown jewel here, which is your decks and, and how you're going to kind of scale it out. So I guess we'll start with the, the bandwidth during the early stages. What have you guys been seeing from a testing stage? What types of speeds have you been seeing on your swaps? Uh, how are yeah, I have, comparable? Yeah, to, I uh, haven't looked in I haven't looked into the the speeds of what we've been getting, but I do know that we've set it up to the fastest. So whatever the fastest is, that's what we have. So that's the plan that we have on, you know, the, the RPC, the, the cloud, all the security is added. So uh, even DDoS, um, DDoS filtering, everything. So yeah, cloud, DDoS filtering, um, really super fast rpc uh yeah it's it's got everything it's it's turbocharged definitely uh, and if we're going to say we're going to be the fastest decks on solana we're definitely going to back that up so it's got a lot under the hood um itself uh and in terms of um you know uh what do you call it the the data the um to how much traffic it's got i haven't got that answer for you of course but all I know is, yeah, exactly. We've built it to, you know, be uh, fully ready for like the highest amount of traffic that you can get that you can bring to it. So, 
that's the whole point. You know, uh, yeah, for me, I'm up. trying to figure out, like, you know, based on your holder count, how many people have yeah. actually utilized the tech, you know, versus how many of your users are non-holders, because that right there kind of creates an opportunity. If 95% of your DEX users are, are non foul token holders, well, that right there is a low hanging fruit for you to be able to market on the token side. So it's just all about identifying opportunities within the, the growth process for you guys to, yeah, save, save up, save time, save money. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, if, if it's uh, aligns like that, it's easier to kind of sell on. So yeah, no, I appreciate that. And, and obviously as that information becomes more available and you guys start tracking it or just publicize public like publicizing it I yeah mean, so i mean if, yeah, but, if you're talking, because that's going to yeah get in terms of backing it up putting putting the money where the mouth is definitely and putting that data out there 100 percent. that's a very good idea maurice we'll look into that one uh and yeah and going back to your question of course is what do we offer i mean on the decks itself of course you've got the super fast um the swap function, uh, we have upgrades that will be pushed probably um, in the next probably half an hour to an hour. Um, we will have, we did have it uh, locked in phase one just to the tokens that will be staking. That'll actually change. We'll have uh, every single token on the Solana uh, blockchain will be available so you can swap anything, which is great. So it opens it up to all the tokens. Uh, and of course, we we'll have staking that is just around the corner. So it's single asset staking uh, that we spoke about. So yeah, Falks, Chuga, USDC, and USDT that'll be available. So just waiting for the audit, the um, you know audit that's coming down from Solid Proof. As soon as that's done, you know, make sure it's all secure, uh, all good to go. We'll then make the staking live, which everyone's waiting for. Uh, when staking, there's a lot of you know questions that we get. Uh, yeah, and that'll be up. So, uh, of course, we've got a lot of um, the next phases up. That will be liquidity pools uh, in the farms. And then, of course, yeah, the cross-chain and then um, uh, the cross-chain bridge and our own router is the ultimate, uh, which is in quarter four. If we can do it before quarter four, we will definitely, you know, move it to quarter three. But, yeah. That, yeah and definitely want to make sure, like, you guys are, are showcasing – um, those statistics and stuff, the speed the, and bandwidth usage, um, because, you know, with the fees that you guys are looking at, obviously volume and usage comes in um, to play when it when you're looking at like a forecasting perspective, uh, especially for those stakers that are participating and, you know, they're trying to see what they're looking to get paid out. Like that, yes. that's, that's really relevant. Um, and a lot of the times, again, you know, uh, it, you seem like a really nice guy. Uh, you seem like again you you're working hard, but uh, the way the space is, you know, I, I yeah, kind of I'm, I'm, you, 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 you you've probably given me guys a nice guy, right? So yeah, you know, no, I, you've I given me really given me some about, ideas. Uh, yeah. A year into the into the space, you know, I used to I'm a people guy, so if somebody you know was a yeah seemed like a good dude, I'm like yeah, I'll throw a little bit of money in, and then you know you kind of find you know, learn the hard way. So what what you need to make sure you're doing is just showcasing. Yeah, the the numbers because honestly, you'll stand out over probably ninety five percent of the other projects that exist if you just have that base level of transparency, which is kind of crazy to say, because a lot of the times what we get is these. I don't want to say fluff <laughs> graphics or fluff mockups, but they they put you know whatever the name of their project is compared to you know one two three four five however many the top competitors they're trying to compare and they say we got this they they don't have this or they they don't have this we got this but the they don't have this has been live for a lot of the times like six months a year they have millions in volume so I'm like, yeah, that's cool. You can tell me on a graphic that you're gonna have everything that this thing isn't. But they have everything you guys don't from a actual quantitative perspective, which is the volume, the numbers, the fee, yeah. the revenues. Yeah. And that's what's going to foster uh, adoption for, for newer yeah. users, especially on the larger scale. So, again, it's it's just really showcasing it. And 
I love what you said, put your money where your mouth is. But if you can do that, you're going to stand out. And it's not even yeah. like you're doing anything crazy. You're just showcasing what the project's doing. But no one in this space does it properly. I got to say that. They're all... Yeah, look, you've, you've given me some like really good think, ideas. They, they, yeah, yeah they, they, they kind of position it based on what they think people want to hear, not based on yep. the numbers or the facts that are actually relevant to the, the sector that they're trying to go into. So it's very yeah. strange. I, I'm a weird duck too. So like, you know... That's I'm, fine because I'm... Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm like competitive that. as I'm competitive as well, and you know, you've mentioning this, it's it's definitely um, being listened to, and yeah, I'll be talking to the team, uh, in you know, after this AMA, and definitely sort something out. But that's a great idea, uh, and we've got a lot of other ideas as well that we can add, like some um, like e like blogs or or news pieces on the site as well. But yeah, just to link it back in. But yeah, that's that's a great idea. And you know, proving with with the data, you, you can't argue with data and statistics. You just can't argue with it. It's like you know, numbers don't lie. That's that's a beautiful. Exactly. Um, that's a beautiful <laughs> thing exactly about right. uh, math. And and honestly, it's why personally I love the blockchain. And the biggest thing I try and tell people who who don't understand DeFi or the blockchain or crypto, you know, all my friends and whatever in in real life. That just don't get it because they see the one side, the scammy side, that the negative side yeah. because of how the the media portrays it. I'm like, honestly, guys, what? I was like, you think BlackRock and you know the the Federal Reserve and the the Bank of Canada are being transparent and honest with us about yeah. how their money being spent? Yeah. I'm like, and it goes back to the, know, yeah. Like, yep. I, I bet maybe five percent of the population yep. knows yep. what like fractional reserve yep. banking is. So then, like spinning it back to crypto, it's so, so many people don't actually understand like what it is on the back end. So yeah, if you guys are able to, to showcase that, it's you're gonna make you know, you're gonna have a little bit more staying power from a brand perspective because you will be seen more of a a, a thought leader and somebody who's knowledgeable in the space. And if yep. you have that knowledge, people will be more willing to give you time to build versus looking at the chart and saying, ah, chart don't look good, I'm moving on. Yep, absolutely. So anyways, in terms of like the, the benefits and, and kind of tying the token back. So if I'm holding that, so say, for example, I'm holding, uh, you know, what's a nice soft number, round number, a million X tokens. What would be some of the benefits I see as a user of your DEX versus, you know, if you're using it, holding zero of your token? Exactly. Well, of course, you're going to have a a token that's going to, you know, um, grow in, you know, price, of course. Uh, as, you know, as I did mention at the start of the market share that we can tap into, that's us. So we're a DEX you know, decentralized exchange on the Solana blockchain. And of course, you'll be able to stake as well. So as soon as the staking is live, you'll be able to earn 80% uh, APR on that, uh, you know, tokens that you have you can stake it into the DEX and earn passive income on, on top. And of course, we do have a top 100 um, Falks staking rewards as well, which is 33% of the revenue share of the you know the the small amount of taxes that are on the decks, thirty three percent every week go to the top one hundred, so you get extra on top. So that's incentivizing whales as well because you don't want whales to you know buy lots of you know your token and then dump it on the markets. So incentivizing them, to, you know, stake and want to be you know a competition, want to be in that top one hundred. So yeah, and and of course. This this dex itself is being built out in in phases, and as I said, this is phase one. So, so many more you know things to be bolted onto this this utility project. So that's why it's the future. The future of this project is why you would want to you know have those tokens in the first place. So, if you're in the top a hundred, have you guys done any you know soft forecasting on what? They yeah, it was to receive based on where you guys are at right now from volume. It was about 20, 22,000 from memory from the previous project. 
uh, which we did do the top 100. Uh, and their volume was, you know, not even close to what we're, you know, doing right now. So, yeah, it's it's going to be, you know, a decent number. And it's paid out monthly, I, right? Uh, every week. Every oh, week. So is, is so that you say every weekly that you were looking yeah, that at? Was, or is that 22 that was, monthly? Yeah, that was 22,000, which was 50%. So we're going 33%, but we've got more volume, right? Uh, because... We need to, you know, be sustainable. So we've got other places where it's, you know, going, feeding back into the staking rewards, the usual that you do with tokenomics to feed back into your ecosystem to keep it running. Uh, and then, of course, 33% will be going to uh, those top 100, which looking at the volume, uh, the previous project was about 22,000. That was 50%. And as we're a, a larger uh, volume, uh, yeah, and you can just imagine what those numbers would be. Well, that makes sense. Now, people are probably listening, like, what, what is Maurice? Why is Maurice asking these questions? I don't get it. But uh, the, the reason I ask, I'm trying to figure out what, what the break-even point would be for somebody who bought in. You know, for example, if, you know, you buy in for that million, I don't know what the cost would be. I'd have to, you know, pull up the, the chart and look at the, you know, the, 1 million times whatever the, the price of each token is right now. Probably you buy cost. Yeah. yeah, so I, I'm pretty much just trying to see what the break even mark looks like for somebody who bought in and you know when they could you know just get their money back off of staking alone because when you're comfortable and you know kind of baseline when to expect, you know, you're going to break even, you can hold that or you can hold your your other part of your bag and utilize the passive re returns from the staking to kind of get your initials out over time. And then you're not seeing those massive dumps or sell-offs on the chart, right? It's kind of a way to, to combat those red candles. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the reasoning behind for everybody listening. Um, so you, you don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's, it's important though um, to know what, you know, project you are getting into and how it all works so just knowing every little intricacy that you know runs that dex and how it all works but yeah everything we've done is you know built you know for sustainability and you know provide that utility and of course rewards for the holders because that's that's the main purpose of a dex is to reward the holders so that's what we're going to do and yeah, lots, lots and lots of marketing down the track as well. Uh, lots of, you know, building, uh, lots of conversations with the dev, uh, implementing, you know, fixes, nice to have, to make it look nice, just improve, improving the site itself. So yeah, lots of work. It doesn't stop. It keeps going and lots of sleep is lost, but you get over it because you're building a DEX. <laughs> I like that. And um, in terms of the the additional features or additional revenue streams, you did touch on a couple of different things, whether it was the token listings. I know you mentioned uh, potentially kind of going the route of a token launcher. You, you use the word launch pad, but I think more of like a token deployer is, is where I would see this one falling under the category of. Um, so yeah, how, how would those additional sides or features continue to add to that, like staking pool, that revenue pool that, that people would be able to draw into? Yeah. So that would really come down to future partnerships as well. So, you know, partnerships with uh, other communities to, of course, list their token on our decks. So it's a win-win for them to you know be able to be listed on our DEX itself. Uh, the website itself, the landing page, is actually set up for creating tokens. I think it's like um, it's it's on my. I'm the only one that can do that, of course, by connecting the wallet up. So it's all set up for that. So in the future, yeah, if we uh, do decide, of course, not right now because it's all about Falcon X, but definitely in the future, and yeah, through partnerships and of course listing more tokens you know growing growing as a dex so of course you're going to have more volume because you're going to have other tokens you're going to add to those tokens that are on the dex 
and that's definitely what it's all about. Just yeah, getting extra volume, more listings, and of course having that ability to do it yourself uh, down the track. Right now, from a, a branding, um, a marketing perspective. You know, you guys kind of branded out same color scheme as, as Solana within your logo and a lot of the stuff that that I've seen on your, you know, your your white paper and, and whatnot. So, how do you just continue to push uh, the kind of the brand? The like Falcon X is a name. And again, I did. I, I wanted to touch on this at some point. In the AMA. I guess I'll do it now. Uh, Falcon X is a name we've seen in the past in crypto, although it has been more geared towards the meme side. I think it was what back in 2021, 2022, there was a, a larger Falcon X project kind of following the hype from Elon that did unfortunately get a, a stop order. Um, so just kind of curious how from a, a naming or branding perspective, you guys work around that if potentially it comes to it because yeah it's happened it's we happened. we have uh, yeah we have why oh, just name, kind of, <laughs> say again i was going to say and like why the choice of name considering like that past uh existence. yeah well look it is a very very strong name but we have i don't know spoken about of course falks falks decks so our tickers falks so if you know we were to it's a name it's a brand um were to not, you know, say Falcon X, uh, it's Falks, Falks Dex. Everyone knows it as Falks. If you go into the Dex Tools, Dex Screener, you type in Falks, it's the first one. Uh, Falcon X might be a, a couple of other ones there, but wherever you go and you look for it, just F-A-L-X and boom, it's right there. So, yeah, in terms of, you know, why Falcon X, it's a strong name. Um, the the logo itself was actually designed by a community member. We had a competition. Uh, we took a long time to try and, you know, choose the right one, the right fit for our branding. Uh, yeah, it was someone from the community actually made the um, token itself, uh, the token, the logo. Uh, we just brushed it up a little bit. But yeah, that's just involving the community. And that's what we've been doing from the start. Just involving the community and the branding, the name it actually came from the community as well. And yeah, I mean, if if that was to happen, um, yeah, I mean, with a name, unless you got a, a trademark or whatever, but yeah, I mean, it's not hard. You know, Falks, Falks Dex, there's definitely ways that we can work around that. Great answer. And if the need for a rebrand had to happen, you're already kind of, you know, you could you could transition the official name to more on like absolutely, the yeah, thicker without so. you know losing the meaning behind the project. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, no good answer. Um, just definitely something I had to touch on. Uh, not super important, but it is, you know, something I wanted to to cover. I had it on my checklist here. Uh, another thing as well, this one's actually driven from a community question. This was from Karen, who was curious if you guys have maybe forecasted or set aside a plan to increase the number of stakers at a certain milestone for volume. So if you guys hit five, yeah, I, don't know, we'll just, we'll, I like easy numbers. So if you guys have 5 million, would you consider opening up the number of stakers to say potentially 250, 200, 500, whatever it may be, so that more people can benefit? Yes, the incremental rewards would be lower, but there's more people benefiting. And again, it would have to be based on that kind of preset milestone, whatever it is internally. Yeah. Well, we, we're not, we're not basing ours on emissions. So uh, predominantly you do emissions with staking uh, pools. This is actually measured off price. So it's, it's not concerned with how many stakers that you do have. So um, there's no limit on the amount of stakers. If, if that uh, makes sense. There's no locks. There's no limit. To I might have can... missed, if I got I the question missed, right. So, um, she was curious on the, the revenue because it's only available for the top 100. That's what she was curious when I mentioned the 100 oh, and if the yeah, 100 well, would expand to like 250 or 500 or whatever. Sorry. It's more on yeah, the revenue oh, yeah. um, oh, distribution set. This, this, this is actually a question I've asked myself, um, you know, for the future the future of the project so yeah if the amount is 
uh, super high and if you can afford to you know, move it to the, the top 200, most definitely that's just proving that you're growing as a DEX. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, sorry to understand that question. Yeah, 100%. So that can then shift out to a higher number, of course, to match the amount that's coming in. Yes, yes is the answer to that one. I apologize. I think I just uh, misspoke on, on Karen's question there. No, Karen, I appreciate uh, you asking about that. Now, um, another thing that I was curious about is um, bandwidth. Now, a lot of the times on some of these these swaps or these DEXs, um, people projects will give the ability for people to maybe set up nodes or benefit from a support standpoint. I don't know if you guys, as you mentioned, liquidity pools and stuff like that coming to play in the future. I was curious yep. to, to know how you guys would be be running and building out your, your node protocol um, with holders. Is it going to be run via, like, will people who are the top stakers have the first dibs, for lack of a better term, to maybe run the nodes? What would that side of the equation look like as you guys are adding in more of the, the LP pools in the future? Um, in terms of, you said the word nodes. Yeah, so I, I know that people could essentially, like you can set up separate LPs or separate liquidity pools to run off of the decks that it can it can draw from. Um, but I am curious, like if you guys are going to allow community members to like self fund that via a node based setup, or, or how exactly? Yeah, we work. don't. We don't have um, nodes in our roadmap. Uh, we haven't considered anything to do with nodes. Uh, I don't like nodes myself. <laughs> um, yeah, we haven't done nodes, but yeah, definitely LPs and farms. So yeah, to answer that question, we're sticking to our roadmap. Uh, there was no mention of nodes in our roadmap, unfortunately. Uh, there is, of course, um, of course, the Telegram bot integration, where, of course... Uh, it will be faster, you know, to get a hold of tokens by using that, you know, that bot itself. But yeah, as terms of nodes, just sticking to uh, liquidity pools and of course, farming. So yeah, the pools and farms. Okay. And then, yeah, for the integration of the, the Telegram bots, uh, I, I did have a couple of questions from our community about that. Uh, the first of which was chain. Are you guys going to strictly focus on Solana when when building out your Telegram bot, or are you going to make it uh, available for users to access multi-chain? And this could kind of grow your reach a little bit from that perspective. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. With with of course the um, the bot itself, but of course uh, have a Falcon X token that will be integrated with that. So. Uh, at this stage, um, not entirely sure what direction we'll take with what uh, chains that we can do. But at the moment, of course, we're just focusing on on Solana and just the you know the launch of this Dex. Uh, not getting our fingers into too many pies. Do something, be brilliant at it, and then move on to you know another chain once we we do that. So definitely just focusing on this Dex, giving it everything that we have. Um, yeah, just making it you know successful uh, and making sure we keep it successful and yeah doing everything we can in the space but yeah in terms of different chains i've had this question a few times it's like we want to you know be you know perfect at this first and then we'll definitely you know look at you know other chains if if we have that option and, and that's available to us and if it's if it's viable like if it's going to be beneficial for you know the decks most definitely but I'm not going to be promising something, you know, over promise under deliver. Um, yeah, stick to our roadmap and, you know, just do what we say we're going to do. Yeah. And now within the bot, um, people are curious, like with the, the types of features, if you guys are going to have like auto buying features or if it's going to be one strictly to, yeah, just have like a preloaded wallet and just you know skip a couple steps type of uh, feel. Uh, yeah, look, this this will be uh, after the the staking. Um, obviously, it's got quarter three there, so this will kind of be a bit of a surprise. We do have a direction we want to take with it. Um, of course, 
like anything that we do will be revenue share as well. We're going to introduce that as well. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that one. But yeah, there's, there's a lot that we want to, you know, you know, spring, spring out onto the community and go, this is what we have. Boom. Let's go. So kind of what we do with marketing is just, just full send, full send. The most common question I, I just, I saw it three times uh, within our group that that sent to me is all about the AI integration. So it's stated a couple of times in, in the later part of your roadmap that AI integration yes. uh, within, I believe, both the DEX and the Telegram bot. Uh, but but the community was just curious exactly what that will entail. Is it going to be more predictive, or is it going yeah. like yeah it, yeah most definitely uh, it's on the roadmap. It's in quarter four, so we can't deny it. AI, you know, it's it's here whether we like it or not. So we definitely want to integrate AI into our decks in some form. So to be totally transparent, of course, we don't know the full extent. So being fully transparent, we don't know the full extent of what that will entail, but we definitely know that we want AI integrated into our decks. But what shape, what form that will take, it's, um, yeah, it's early stages. So that's quarter four. That's why it's right at the end of the roadmap. We can't deny it. Um, we might not even be using Google one day. We'll be using some form of AI. It's there. Why, you know, why not you know, work with it rather than against it? So that's why it's there at the end of the roadmap itself, being you know, fully honest. Little aside, yeah. Google received yeah. their first grant from uh, the NSA. What was that? A little aside, Google Google's founder back way back in the day received their first one of their first grants from the NSA. Yeah, wow. I wonder why they're they're monitoring so much data. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, no, I, that definitely makes sense. You know, you can't you can't rush rolling it out to too early. You guys really have to kind of grow your market share first before you add in um, additional features. So yeah, it makes sense. Now. We touched on. I'm just kind of going through my my checklist here before. I, I guess we kind of touched on competitor analysis a little bit, um, but I was really hoping you could go into. You, you mentioned you didn't want to say anything negative about them, and that's fine. Um, but I did again just want to go into. What you guys see are the most common like negatives or like pushback about the other DEXs. And that's like kind of what led you to create it. Because a lot of the times people don't know all the issues that exist. Yeah. Um, in, in this yeah, space. exactly. Well, being a user of, you know, these platforms myself, I've used all, all of them. Um, I think Orca uh, keeps shutting down on me. Um, Radium definitely shuts down on me many, many times. Uh, you'll be on a page and it'll just error straight up. So yeah, it's a lack of maintenance uh, and optimization definitely. Um, I actually have had, obviously, because we are using the Radium router for our decks, but obviously with you know extra things to make sure that it is super fast. Um, yeah, that the, my devs have you know read into the code uh, for that and have had to actually implement changes so that to me straight away tells me one yes my devs are awesome uh, well, our devs of the community um, but yeah just picking up on just you know code that hasn't been you know maintained uh, on the development side and the uh, solidity um, side of the house but yeah that's definitely you know a, it's a gap in the market um, if we you know can perform you know better we maintain we have optimization we have that utility and we're just you know bringing that into the space then there is so much potential that you know loads of potential and lo lots of market share right there so yeah that's definitely why you know while we're here while we're in here what we're doing what we're doing so we have passion and and you know all those goals. That's why we're All right, well, here to 
we're, and, we're only you know 10 days old to the token yeah uh, and i oh, would no. say i try not to get too far ahead of myself um, you know, you, you guys do have a little bit extended runtime going back to Solex. I mean, we can say yes. that in terms of a community building growth, uh, ex- you know, what you've put out there, marketing material, et cetera. Uh, but, but you're only 10 days old, right? So like, let's walk us through what is, we'll go short time frame. What does the next month look like? Like walk us through what you guys hope to happen. And obviously, you know, best case scenario, um, between now and we'll say middle to late June, we're not even going to put too much uh, stress on the, the time frame. Yeah, of course. Um, the main next thing that we do have, of course, is the the launch of the staking. So yeah, that's the next big ticket item is getting the obviously the uh, the uh, staking audit back, and then get staking out. So that's the next big ticket item, and with that in good fashion and of course what we always do is smash the marketing so it'll be staking is available there's also marketing going on it's going to be crazy people are going to be throwing things around uh yeah just back it up with that and then of course then continue the build for the decks and just keep bringing that news out keep keep marketing keep trending and build the next next part of this actual decks so bring out that extra, you know, pieces that are on the roadmap and, you know, the user case on this Dex itself. So, yeah, just heaps of marketing. Maurice, um, as you can, you know, tell, we love our marketing. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing. And the, the tokenomics is like, it's just the way it's laid out allows us to do that. And you have to, you never underestimate marketing. So, yeah, in terms of that, just doing the next things. I was going to say, and then the, the flip side of that is what would you ask either your community members or people that may hear about foul X for the first time in that, you know, in the next couple of weeks, maybe this is the first time hearing about it today. And, you know, often I, I always advise our community, if it's not meme based, you have a little bit more time to really deep dive, join the community, do your research uh, and, and kind of run through those comparatives. So, what would you ask for from the community or from people listening to you guys over that run, like over the next couple of weeks as you guys are, are preparing to roll out the staking? Um, how can they best get involved, get active, and help to try and you know push uh, Phalex forward from their side? Yeah. Well, I mean, you don't have to be a massive influencer to have an effect. So we've seen it in uh, the raids on on over on Twitter. Uh, yeah, just getting in. A lot of people have um, put out lots of memes. Just the the community itself, uh, the Falcon X community, they're just next level. Like just jumping into the chat, it's just going crazy. Of course, we've got the buy bots in there, but yeah, just just the enthusiasm. Everyone's changed their you know their premium um, emoji to the Falcon X token. Uh, you can just see that that mass adoption happening. And yeah, I mean, what they can do is yeah they show it to their mates hey have you tried this dex just that word of mouth that's just the best thing the best marketing you can get um pretty much and yeah just trying the dex for the first time how fast it is what we have you know in in you know the future that's coming out we always give marketing updates we give chart updates uh we've got um, monopoly on the um, team does all the marketing and uh of course we've got albert as well so we've got three of us that are in the core team and then the devs. And then, of course, we have all the admins that, you know, spend 14 hours or, you know, more in the chats, making sure they attend to everyone's questions, keep the fight out as you do, uh, and just being there to answer those questions. So new people join every single day. I think we're up to only 5,000 people uh, in the Telegram. Uh, yeah, just being there, answering those questions. I'm always in there as much as I can. Uh, even though my wife, you know, gets a little bit, you know, jealous that I'm on the phone all the time, which I it's for a reason. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, just in terms of what they can do, there's so much you can do. Even if, you know, you're one person, you can just tell your friend, put it in. You know, we have a competition, of course, at the moment on Twitter. Uh, it's a, a shill a competition and you can win, you know, 
think it was three, three soul, two soul, one soul. That's the prizes, first, second, and third. So yeah, involving the community where we can. I love it. Um, and then in terms of like I don't I don't like to speculate on uh you know usage, but you, you mentioned that you guys are up on your volume from Solax days. So I just wanted to understand a little bit more about where you guys were on Soul X and then what you guys have seen. I think you mentioned around 22.5 um, on this one that, that you've seen on the volume on a weekly basis, which is great. Um, or sorry, on the past one. So yeah, just kind of figuring out where you guys are at for volume and then any types of percentage increases that you're hoping to like see from some of these staking coming out, et cetera. Just yeah. So I don't, if I don't you're know how talking... to work that question. Sorry, that was a little. No, that's fine. Um, if you're talking some of the things, I wanted to to cover before we yeah, close fine. out. If we're talking, yeah, if we're talking uh, volume, as in uh, the volume in the token itself, um, yeah, I believe it was it was over. It was like two point something, maybe two point three uh, million, uh, and that's when we started CMC trending because uh, I believe you need two million. Um, that's uh, 2 million in, in volume uh, in that 24 hour period, which we did have. So yeah, we did CMC trending definitely. Um, yeah. And in, in terms of volume, I mean, staking, of course it's naturally will, you know, create more volume. So in yeah, terms of volume, that's you, you provide the utility, you're going to get that extra volume. So um, yeah, we don't plan to stay this small, definitely going to progress and get uh, tons more volume. Um, yeah. But, you know, just doing what we say we're going to do. So, and of course, if we're better than, you know, our competitors and we keep doing that, then it's definitely, you know, going to work for us in our favor. No, I, I like it so far. And again, definitely seems like you guys have had, uh, a successful run i think what was it like 20 21 67 or 23 67 that you guys raised successfully yeah it was like 360k i think yeah the the value of oh, here it is yep uh 2167 that's correct. oh it was good yeah i was i was correct my first guess let's go uh i wasn't sure if it was 23 or 21 when i said it Num the numbers guy, definitely yeah no I, I have a weird weird memory uh my i always joke my rang, rang and things have good memories yeah, I always joke with girlfriend. That's why she can't win arguments. It's because I, I don't forget stuff that she says even five years ago. Sometimes I just yeah. let her win, but you know that's that's just you have to let the girls win or, or no, yeah. not nobody. Hundred percent. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think from you know what I wanted to cover off, I went through a lot of my initial points. You know, I did want to spend like that first 15, 20 minutes kind of doing more of a. Not, not a typical project breakdown, but more on the sector, kind of what you were hoping to achieve, some of the gaps that you saw. And, and I think you did a good job in you know those initial answers. I know it's still super, you know, super early stages, you know, very much in the infancy with regards to the the actual utility. I mean, even the project, it's only 10 days old on the token side. So just make sure you guys keep that in mind. Join the community, just stay up to date, stay active. You know, you heard. Matt, say how you guys as community members, as potential uh, holders of the token could add value as they're going about their their scaling and their ramp up. Um, so make sure you kind of get active if you like what you had to, to hear. If you Again, if you're active and you're trading on Solana, I personally haven't been as active on, on Sol myself. I just haven't been trading a ton the last couple of months, um, but I am curious. So for those users who, who do a lot of trading on Seoul, especially in our community, go check it out. I really would love to get some live feedback from the apes on, on the decks and how it works, the speeds uh, that you guys are seeing. So, yeah, that's kind of like my call to action. You know, if you are going to be doing some trading on Seoul, uh, maybe try try a new utility. Try giving uh, FALX a, a shot and see how it works. Um, you know, always recommended sometimes if, if you're new with a utility and this is any utility, regardless if it's like 500K or 500 million. If you don't know the team or if you're not familiar with the utility, just connect with the fresh wallet, test it out. No risk involved with that. Um, 
And, and that's just, I think, a good kind of safety protocol, regardless of any project market cap. Five hundred. It, it could be two billion. Just always keep yourself safe. So, uh, yeah, really good answers. Still super early. Chart liquidity very healthy. You guys have a five to one ratio, which at eight million market cap isn't uh, what we're used to. I think it's more or less than one percent is the the liquidity ratio. These memes have been going for these days. Super volatile, and uh, if you're a big holder, you can't really get much out without nuking the chart. So, it's definitely tough. I like that you guys have that ratio uh, stronger, and yeah, just you know, good good answers. Just give get them guys. Give those guys here at Falcon X, Falax, time to build, time to scale the utility, get the staking live, and, and see what the type of, of returns are to the holders or to their stakers based on the, the volume. But if they're able to, to capture, you know, a good chunk of volume on this chain that, that doesn't seem to be going away, you know, it's it's definitely one to to keep your eye on. So. A uh, great job with your responses, Matt. I, I I can, you know, I know it's getting late. I think it's like almost 1 30 in the morning for you there. So I uh, very much fun. appreciate you taking the extra time yeah. and, and hanging with us. You, great answers. Um, you know, very likable guy in terms of your personality, very easy to talk to. So, you know, appreciate it. And again, um, to you and the rest of your team over there in the community, I do have to apologize that it was a little bit uh, delayed, you know, with the, with regards to the communication up front. Uh, as I said, you know, we'll definitely make sure we make up for it on the back end. I'll put together maybe just for myself yeah. a fun little contest for our community uh, to push some additional joins and views on the AMA video once it goes live and, you know, do a little trivia about it. To, yeah, maybe in an absolutely. I'll, I'll send my community over there, put a few comments and a few likes over there. Awesome. So I'll, I'll uh, you know, in terms of the, the next steps, maybe I'll just give you a quick 30 second breakdown on what you can expect, what's to come after Matt, just so that you can kind of keep your community uh, following along and rating with us. So after yeah. the game wraps up, I'll send over the, the rough copy to yourself and I'll drop it in the group as well. So everybody has it. If you want to get that pinned in your community, that's cool. Uh, but I also drop it to our video editor. He uh, goes back and just reformats anything if there's any issues in the sound. He chapter logs the AMAs so that people can kind of, you know, if there's a specific topic they're looking to cover, they can search for it a little bit easier. Um, it uploads it to our YouTube. And then from there, I'll kind of drop it over to you because I, I sometimes, I like to typically get the tweet out before, but I do in like what uh, Will would have sent you guys. It does say that if the tweet was unable to go out before, I'll put it out after, and it will just be linked to when the YouTube goes live. So to put sure. people to actually listen to the AMA, because that's the whole point. And that's why we Absolutely. made the shift to YouTube for the, like the recording and centralization and kind of post-marketing purposes. So, um, yeah, I would say midday tomorrow, our, our video guy is amazing. So he typically has yep. to turn around pretty quick. I'd say mid to end of day tomorrow, you can expect the YouTube to go live and then I'll drop the tweet tomorrow afternoon, kind of with that little contest and everything to, to push people back in to check it out, get your social to follow yeah. and uh, watch the AMA. Uh, sounds awesome, Maurice. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, no, that's just, you know, what's to come after the AMA. Uh, we'll, we'll chat in our group. We have a utility showcase with our partners at coin merge coming up it's every thursday now i don't know if timing wise it'll work because it's at 1 p.m eastern so you may be stretching your day again um, but if you even have a community member or somebody else that's maybe a little bit of an earlier time zone you want them to jump in uh it's not a full ama so like five to ten minute well i get that over on on the spaces but yeah on twitter with our partners at coin yep. merge so you'll have us yeah, other just, keynotes on the panel, like a couple of other projects. It's just really good cross exposure and networking. That's all. Yeah, let me let me know in a DM when that is that I can definitely make that. That's fine. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll talk to you guys about it right after the AMA, just to give you the time, and then the the link with the official space where people can set the reminders comes out often one day prior. Sometimes, like we we try and push for two. So I'm hoping it comes out Tuesday, but worst case, it'll be out Wednesday. So you guys get that full 24 hours uh, to kind of share it around. The community will know. And we did make a change 
and this will be the first week with the new format. So yeah. less projects, so four projects now, uh, but each project instead of six and each project just gets a little bit more time. So it was very tough to break down utility in five to 10 minutes. So now we're doing about 15 plus five minutes for questions each. So still the hour, 20 minute space, but a little bit more intimate time with each project, which I think is going to be beneficial. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, of course, we've got staking coming out uh, and we're going to be hitting Twitter hard. So we'll have 50 influencers that will be doing um, Twitter raids uh, and then, yeah, getting the community involved. That's uh, going to be, you know, super crazy, especially with the two uh, members on the team that are doing marketing. So watch this space. Um, yeah, things are going to get crazy. So, yeah. So yeah, thanks so much. My final call to action is just, guys, thank you so much for, for tuning in. If you did, if you maybe jumped in a little bit late, couldn't catch the full recording, as I mentioned, the YouTube will be uploaded by tomorrow. So you guys can go back onto our YouTube channel, uh, find the AMA, go back, chapter log. So if you know you want any clarification on any specific topics we covered, you can find it easily. And then my last call to action would be to join their socials. So definitely, you know, put a follow on their Twitter, but more importantly, uh, you know, as is the heart and soul of most communities, jump into their Telegram so you can keep up to date on the pinned messages, keep up to date on what's to come. And, you know, as they release more details on their staking and everything else, like uh, you can hit some of those action items that Matt and I covered on how to add value, how to participate as a community member or a potential holder. So, um, yeah, Matt, great work, great answers, very, very likable guy. I respect you kind of coming back to the table after, yeah. you know, the unfortunate draining incident with the, the staking protocol. Uh, but again, you know, I respect it. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, you guys can have a little bit more success this time. You know, it seems like you have better pieces in place with regards to the team and security. 100%. Uh, so, yeah, yep. keep it up. Great work. I appreciate Thank the you. time. And yeah, still in the early stages. So you got to give these guys time to build. Everything started uh, from square one. You know, that's that's the thing. No. The ground up, yeah. that's it. So, sometimes people just forget that, you know, the project that's been running for five years, five years ago, wasn't what they are today. And everybody yep. has to start somewhere. So just, you know, give them time. Follow along, do your research, stay up to date. That's the, the best way that you can kind of have success in the space with any project. So a uh, great work, Matt. We'll talk in DMs about Thursday, but uh, I'd love to get you guys in there for that extra exposure. And then we also have our spaces, but those are, I'm not going to be running. I'm not going to commit to a time until probably early <laughs> to mid June until my mom's stuff's just taken care of because there's just too much, too many moving pieces for those. So uh, we will chat in mid June, though I'm sure about our own space and getting you guys up as one of the featured guests. So yeah, lots, awesome. of, lots of fun stuff coming up, man. I uh, appreciate Sounds the time, good. and uh, we can close out the official recording. I'll send you the rough copy to the group, and once the link comes out on Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll drop that in there as well, so the community can go in and set the reminders and come out and show some support. Awesome. Thanks so much, Maurice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, again, uh, long-term plays, guys. Uh, you know, I know that they, they haven't really, the chart has, you know, seen a lot of positive mo momentum since launch. Keep an eye if there is potentially that that dip, that that small sell-off that sometimes happens after a pre-sale. I know people are always watching for entries when there hasn't been like a, a big dip. So join the community, stay up to date, and yeah, good job. Sweet. Not a ton of utility plays on Soul. So I'll let you get some sleep. It's 1.30 for you. If you have any questions. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in the chats for another hour. It's fine. Oh, nice. Yeah, beautiful. Just like post AMA, kind of new members coming in. That's not yeah, a bad exactly. idea. I like, the, I like the commitment, man. So, yeah, Vlad, I'll get I'll get my coordinator here to just pop off mute to, to help me out with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm around, here, man. Uh, a little giveaway, but great work. Uh, thank awesome. you so much and have a great, uh, great start your week over there. Awesome. So Vlad, if you okay, want to yeah, hit so up what do we this, have uh, today for the giveaway? Yeah. Well, there you have it. Lots of alpha in that one.
Tons of information, great questions uh, by Maurice from um, Caesar's Call. Um, looking forward to this. I mean, we've been watching the chart, this this whole thing, you know, this this whole AMA. Um, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. This community is amazing. Um, once again, I'm going to get off here. I've got another uh, call here in about 10 minutes. Um, like I said, if you find this uh, helpful, hit that uh, like and, and share button. Click on the little notification bell. And um, would appreciate a subscription, uh, you know, for you to subscribe, if you will. Uh, have yourself a wonderful day. And um, we'll see you on the next one.